Hello and welcome. It's Jennifer McGuire. Thank you for visiting. Today I am sharing with you two clear card designs. Now, somebody asked me the other day what my go to techniques were, and I have several that I've been going to a lot lately. But many years ago, clear cards was definitely a go to technique for me. So I thought I'd revisit it, revisit it again. So I will show one that has a more basic design and then another where I got really creative using lots of sentiments. We'll start with that one first. Now today I'm using products from a newer company. This is Alex Siberia. She's actually had two releases already. Uh, one I bought back when they were a Kickstarter, and now today they have a new release. I was gonna go through and show you all of the products, but to save time in the video, I'm just going to encourage you to go check out their website. They have so many unique products in a variety of styles, everything from cute to classy to kind of uh, contemporary. So I definitely encourage you to go check that out. I'll have links below. Now for today, I'll be using a variety of things new and old from them and creating those two clear cards. Let's next talk about clear cards and how to make them. You have a few options. I'll link below to a couple options of clear acetate sheets that you can score, fold, and cut on your own to create note cards. I will also link below to Hero Arts, who's had clear note cards for many, many years. They are side folding, and that is a really easy way to go. Today I'm creating my own so I have top folding. I recommend using a scoreboard and something like a stylus to really press into that score line. Now it won't fold very easily at first. What I do is I fold so that the two ends on the left meet together and I hold it there firmly. Then I take a bone folder and really press where that score line is. So I press down firmly and look at that. You get a nice fold. So this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet. I fold it in half, then I'll cut that in half and I'll have two top folding note cards. Again, if you want a side folding note card, check out what Hero Arts has to option, uh, offer below. And there are different types of acetate. If you have any from recycled material, I definitely encourage you to try that. Just make sure the acetate you use is thin enough that you can fold it to make a note card, but thick enough that the cards will stand up on their own. Okay, now let's get into making these cards. I was kind of feeling stumped on a color combination, so I reached for my color cubes, which I do often. These are cubes with lots of color ideas in them. There are two different cubes available. I just look through, I kind of uh, flip through them all, and I grab a color combination that I think would work with the products that I plan to use and for the recipient I have in mind. I thought this was a beautiful combination and using those mint colored card stocks for leaves was a fun alternative. For the first card, I'll be using the Alex Siberia Fantasy Flower die set. This is a great die set. It has stems so you can create a little bouquet of flowers like you see there where I'm pointing, but I'm just going to be using the flowers and leaves alone to create a little cluster at the center of my clear card. And I will combine in some other leaf dies. I enjoy putting layered die cuts together like this one, and I thought these flowers had a unique look to them. All right, now here is the other leaf die set that I'm using, also from Alex Siberia. Has some classic foliage dies here that you could use in combination with any flower dies. And I used two of these for today's cards. By the way, I love that her dies have that turquoise color. So much fun. So off screen, I did a bunch of die cutting using those colors that I showed you from the color cube card. Now I'm assembling the flowers and leaves and I am really just following along with the packaging on how they suggest to put these together. I did use a foam square at the center and then liquid adhesive around the bottom of this top petal so that it would have a little dimension towards the center like it was opening up. So after I've assembled some flowers and I've doubled up die cuts for the leaves, it's time to start planning this out. Now I wanted most of this card to be clear, but have this cluster of flowers that blocks the sentiment we'll put on the inside. So I needed a base for my cluster of flowers. I used a pretty small oval die to cut several die cuts, two from a dark gray cardstock and two from white cardstock. 
On one of the dark gray ovals, I'm assembling my flowers. I like to start with a cluster, usually of three flowers, one that's bigger than the others, and make that my focal point. And I use liquid adhesive so that I can come in with leaves and lift up that die cut before it dries and tuck those leaves underneath. I find using liquid adhesive for this is key because you have that time to wiggle and move things around and then you know it will dry nice and strong. You can always go back when you're done arranging your die cuts and squeeze a little bit of adhesive there, here and there behind the die cuts to make sure they stay put. That's one of the reasons I like to use a liquid adhesive in a fine tip bottle like I have here because then you can easily squeeze it into those nooks and crannies. By the way, this is Gina K Connect liquid adhesive in her fine tip bottle. All right, so now I have this arrangement of flowers on that oval. And I'm thinking instead of putting this at the center, I'm gonna put my ovals towards the bottom center of the card for something different. Now before we add this little arrangement on the front of our card, I do want to get my ovals all in place so that you can't see through the card in that little spot. So you have a place to write your personal message on the inside. So I'm starting on the front of the card and I'm putting a dark oval there. Again, I'm doing this towards the bottom center, I'm trying to get it as straight and centered as possible, but it really doesn't matter in the end. Now I'll take a white oval and I'll put it on the back of the card lining it up with that oval on the front. So I'll just lay my card down, make sure that lines up with the oval on the front, and now we have an oval on the back of our card. Next, we're taking a white oval and lining it up on the inside of the card. This is a spot where you'll write a personal message. Notice how these are all lining up so it's clear all around it. Then one last one here I'm putting on the inside to cover up the adhesive from the front of the card. So now we have a clear card with that place to put our focal point arrangement and that hidden place on the inside where we can write a personal message. If you want to, you could use a bigger oval or rectangle or something so you have more room to write on the inside. You do have that option too. So now it just kind of looks like this arrangement's floating on the front bottom of our card. All right, so now you could keep it at like this and just add a sentiment to the center, but I wanted to get a little creative and step things up. This will be a thanks card, and I thought it'd be fun to have some floating sentiment strips in the background that kind of support that main thanks theme. And I was inspired by this product. I think this is great. This is from Alex Siberia. It's the Expressing Gratitude Sentiment Stamp Set, and there's a coordinating die. The stamp is one big stamp that stamps all of those sentiments, and then the die will cut them all out at once. This is a huge time saver, and I thought it'd be fun to use several of these sentiments on our card background, and it'll look like they're floating. Now, I decided to do this on a dark gray cardstock with black sentiments, but if you wanted it to be more subtle or softer, you could use white cardstock with maybe a light pink or light gray ink. I wanted to go bold with this design. So I have dark gray cardstock in my Misty stamping tool along with that large sentiment stamp. I'm using my anti-static powder tool, and here I will stamp with Versamark ink, which is clear ink, and then I will add white embossing powder. At this point, I didn't know if I wanted white sentiments on the gray or black sentiments on the gray, so I thought I'd go ahead and do both. That way, I'll have lots of sentiments left over in my extras drawer that I can reach for whenever I need it, because this is going to make a bunch of them. I'll set that Versamark stamped piece aside. Don't worry, it doesn't dry that fast. And here I'll stamp one with black pigment ink. So now I have two options here. On the left, we have the black pigment ink and I'll add clear embossing powder to that. So we'll have black on that dark gray, which I think is a really fun look. Now the option on the right was stamped with Versamark ink and I'll add white embossing powder to this. This will stand out much more. After doing the heat embossing and cutting these, I decided I'm going to save these white heat embossed sentiment strips for later use. And for this card, I'll use the black heat embossed on that dark gray. So after I have these both heat embossed, I will use that coordinating die to cut all the sentiments out at once. This is a huge time saver and you end up with lots of sentiments ready to go. I will use multiples on this particular card. This coordinating die would also be great for creating sentiment strips that you can pre-cut and use with other sentiments from other stamp sets. 
So here is a closer look of that black heat embossed sentiment on the dark gray cardstock. From those sentiment strips, I chose a few that I wanted to include on this thank you card. On the back of each of those, I'm putting double-sided tape so that I can easily add this to the front of our acetate card. By the way, a lot of different adhesives work well on acetate. Double-sided tape definitely works well. A liquid adhesive, depending on the type and the quality you have, is an option. And you can use tape runner. But I do think that the double-sided tape probably holds the best. So I'll take these sentiment strips and just have them kind of staggered around on the background of this clear card, kind of tucking them behind our little arrangement there so they're peeking out. It's not really about reading these sentiments. These aren't the focal point sentiment. I'll add that in a moment. These just kind of support that main thanks die cut that we'll add. And I just thought this was fun to have those sentiment strips floating. If you prefer a softer look, as I mentioned, you could do these sentiment strips in white, or you could skip them all together and instead uh, put your little arrangement towards the top center of the clear card and maybe add a few embellishments. I just thought this was a really fun way to use multiple sentiments on one card. After I have them all arranged and kind of a playful look, you could die cut plain gray strips and glue them to the back side here to cover up that adhesive, but I didn't think it looked too bad, so I'm gonna skip that and leave it as is. Now the die set that I used for the center of this card is definitely a new favorite of mine. This is the large thanks die set. It has the word thanks and the shadow die included. And separately, there is a hot foil thanks that coordinates with it. You can see it peeking off the screen there on the right. I just really like the style of this and will be using it a lot in the future. While I give that a little bit of time to dry, I wanted to share a trick that I haven't shown in a video in a while, but I do off screen. This is uh, a great way to change the color of your pearls or gems to match your project. I wanted some dark peach pearls on this card, but I only had this light pink pearl. So I took a Copic marker, any permanent marker would work, in a red color, and I am just kind of pressing that and swirling that around on these pearls to change the color to fit my project. Now I have them on a sticky mat, which keeps them from really moving around or flipping around too much. If you really want them to stay put on the sticky mat while you do this, you would first want to press them down with your fingers and then they would easily come off when you're done. All right, so once I've colored a few of these, I'm using liquid adhesive. This is Gina K Connect, and I am placing those onto the acetate. So now not only do we have these floating sentiment strips, but we have these floating pearls, which I think is such a cool look. So here's a look at the completed card, and I did match it up with a colored envelope. I think that's a nice finishing touch. Now when you open this card, you'll see there's a white oval where you can write your personal message. You can even flip it over and on the back stamp your handmade by Jennifer stamp. Now I put a lot on this card. I really wanted something bold and full, but you definitely could make this design very simple if you wanted to and use any products that you have. Using a clear card base is such a fun alternative to a regular card and something that you don't see with store-bought cards. All right, here is our second card. You can see again on the outside edge, it's completely see-through. And I'm using on this some stamps and stencils that I've been wanting to use for some time. Now the stamp set is the For You stamp set, and I will also use the coordinating dies to go with it. This is a really unique kind of modern looking uh, layering stamp set that builds together to create these beautiful flowers. Now there's something really special about this set. You see these two images here? They're like tiny little dots that you can stamp on the flowers to give them the look of texture. I love that and I hope they do more like this. All right, so I'm starting with the leaf here and I'm stamping it with a mint color. I'm going along the same color scheme as I did on the first card because I ended up liking it. Now this is a light mint color, so I'm gonna double stamp it just to make it a bit darker. I thought I would add some interest to this also by using a blending brush and a darker teal color to add some color towards the center of this image just to give it a little bit of a shading look. You could go for more contrast if you wanted to or blend maybe from like green to mint or green to yellow, but I'm just going for a little bit of a tone on tone look. 
Next, let's create the two flowers. There's a large layered flower and a small layered flower. So I'm stamping the first layer, which is the biggest one, with my lightest color of ink. That's usually how I do the layered stamping process. I do like to heat set my inks in between each step. You don't have to do this, but I find that it, per, it keeps the layers kind of crisp looking and not blending as much into each other. So now we're going for the second layer and I will stamp this with a slightly darker ink. Now as for what inks you use for this, you can use any inks that you want. I just look through my collection to find some that kind of match that color scheme that I showed you earlier. But here's the secret with layering stamps. You don't have to have perfectly matching inks. You don't have to have a light, medium, and dark of the exact same color. You can really um, mix things up. So you could even do like yellow for the first layer and then red for the second layer, which would give you kind of an orange. You can change things up. Here I did, sorry, my head gets in the way. Here I did like a light grapefruit color and then a little bit darker grapefruit color on top of that. And then the final one, I did like a light red, which gives it a more pink tone. So don't stress out too much about using just the right colors. Usually when you're done, it'll look great. And by the way, that's Pale Tomato from Hero Arts that I did for that last layer. One of my favorite all-time colors. I've loved it for many years. All right, now for those little textured images that I showed you from the stamp set. This one does teeny, teeny little dots. So I'm doing this with a dark color. This is cherry red. And I'll double stamp that just to make them a little bit darker. I like that this gives the look of texture, but doesn't kind of um, blur the look of the image. It def definitely still has a crisp look to it. You could use these images how they are, but I'm going to add the outline details and stamp those with black. On the flowers, it's these little lines that come from the base of the flower. And then for the leaf on the bottom, it does an outline look. I love that these are really unique styled. You got those textured dots, these lines in the flowers. It just makes it feel so much different than other flower sets I have. And I'm always drawn to things like that. I can then finish off this focal point for our card by using the coordinating dies to cut them out. Next, let's create the backdrop for our card, the background. And I'm using a stencil set that's been in my to use bin for a while now, so I'm so glad to use it. It's the Modern Weave Layering Stencil Set. I really like the unique look of this. I'm going to go for a very soft look for the background on today's card. But I think this kind of art deco-y feel would be really cool, maybe gold and silver uh, ink or gel on maybe a bold color cardstock. You really can get some great looks from it. But I'm using white cardstock today and light amount of ink so I can have a soft backdrop for that flower I just created. So over the first layering stencil, I'm adding a super light pink. This is Peony from Hero Arts and I'm using a blending brush. Again, I want this to be super light, but you could go bold if you prefer. And now I have put my cardstock and my stencil into the corner of this stencil mat, and that way I know every time I put my cardstock and stencil in the corner that it'll line up nicely. Now I'm doing the second stencil and doing a kind of a mint color over that, and then over the third stencil, I'll do a light gray. Now one of the things I think would be particularly fun with this layering stencil is to mask off like stripes and you could do um, kind of like a rainbow going across or add even more colors into it by masking off different areas for different colors. But for this card we have this soft background that matches the colors I used in my flower. All right, now this is a six by six piece, so I'll just trim this down. I ended up trimming it down to be about three and a quarter by four and a half inches to go at the center of our card. And all of those extra pieces I'm cutting off there, I will save in my extras drawer. Every once in a while, I like to go through and take those colorful strips and cr uh, create a fun background on a card just so they don't go to waste. All right, now it's time to put our clear card together. Off screen, I have cut four pieces of white cardstock to be slightly bigger than that inked piece. So this is slightly bigger than three and a quarter by four and a half inches. I'm gluing one at the front center of our card. I will then take the second one, put glue on that, and put it on the inside of the card, lining up with the one on the front. And this is just to hide the adhesive. Then we will take our third rectangle and glue that to the back of our card. This is where you can do your hand stamped sentiment. 
Then the final fourth piece, we'll put adhesive on that, and that will go on the inside, and this is where we would write our personal sentiment. I may go back and stamp a greeting in there, but at this point, I'm just gonna leave it blank. All right, so now we have our card, clear card ready. It's just clear around that little bit on the outside. On my first card, I had a lot of clear showing, but this time I just wanted a little bit. Now I can add my inked piece and then add our stamped and die cut flower. I do need a sentiment to go on this and I really like the one I chose from this Life is Good stamp set. There are coordinating dies for it. I love that she offers coordinating dies that cut out the sentiments, which I really like when companies do. It makes it really easy to add anywhere you want on a card. Now this stamp set also does have layering stencils available to color in that pretty floral image. And I like that they included some sentiments in that stencil set, a nice bonus. All right, so I used a sentiment that I white heat embossed from the set on black cardstock, and I used the coordinating die to cut it out. I glued that right on top of my flower, which is on top of that stenciled background. So here's that clear card. I love having that edge be see-through, just add something special to a simple design. You can see it stands up nicely on display and there's plenty of room to write a message on the inside. Here's a closer look at the texture on those flowers that we created with that extra layer of stamping and that fun soft stenciling that we have in the background. I once again colored some light pink pearls with my Copic marker so that I could make it a dark peach to better match my stamping. And I scattered those on the card for a little bit of bling. All right, there you have it, two clear cards. I've done many clear card videos over the years. I will link to a couple here at the end of this video if you want to check it out. And I also really recommend you go window shopping over at the Alex Siberi website. I'll have her collections linked below. There's a lot to offer and the card samples they have are really inspiring. All right, I appreciate you watching. Everything is linked below my YouTube description if you want a closer look. And here are two other clear card videos. Thanks for watching, see you soon.